Good afternoon, ครับ everyone. Okay, I hope that all of you are good, นะครับ Okay, so long time no see, นะครับ We will talk about the makeup class later on, anyway, นะครับ Because we need to have the makeup class before our midterm exam, นะครับ Okay, and also, I'll, <coughs> and also I'll talk about the midterm examination date as well, and the content that we need to have, นะครับ Briefly. Because we haven't finished the thing that we have to know yet. Uh -huh. Okay, right. On the last class, uh -huh, we talk about um, the parts in order to have um, the um, what to say to build the e-commerce presence uh -huh, already uh -huh, and the plan that we have to do that. Uh -huh. So let me just like um, share my screen to you. Uh -huh. All right. On the last class, uh, I started talking about the, um, what to say, the um, e-commerce presence uh, in terms of, in term of the, um, how to build it uh, and what kind of the e-commerce presence that we need to have uh, or we should have. Uh, just won't be long. Uh, let me just like start my iPad a little bit. All right. I have on the last class we talk about the um, different platform that we use in order to build our e-commerce presence. Uh, whenever we talk about the e-commerce presence, uh, you have to think about um, this kind of thing, including vision, mission statement, uh, target audience that you plan to have on um, for your e-commerce, uh, um, the market space, uh, your strategy. Uh, the marketing uh, metrics and also timeline and preliminary budget that you have to plan for the um, presence of your e-commerce. Uh, we talk about the money. Uh, when we talk about the money um, for e-commerce, we have to think about uh, in terms of the business. Uh, what kind of business you are planning to provide uh, in your e-commerce and also what is the revenue model? How do you gonna obtain the money uh, from your e-commerce? Apart from that one, we talk about um, the um, target audience. Uh, where do they live? Uh, what are their behaviors? Uh, what are their consumption patterns? Uh, the patterns of using the digital. Uh, also, the content creation patterns uh, of them. Uh, or in terms of sharing the um, post uh, to other people and the buyer personas. After that, we talk about the market, uh, marketplace or market space that you have. Uh, you have to think about the demographics uh, for its size, growth, and changes, and also um, the surrounding, uh, the structures and the surrounding information like competitors, suppliers, and the substitute products. Uh, also, the next thing that you have to talk about uh, is, is that, okay, for the dynamic city, uh, or a staticity of the um, the content uh, that you provide on your um, market. Uh, um, then you have to just like know yourself. Uh, we talk about SWOT analysis. Uh, and then uh, we ended up with the e-commerce presence map. Uh, so today we will talk about the things more. Uh, on the last time we um, talk about these two last slides, uh, SWOT analysis and e-commerce presence map that are important for you. You have to just like um, know yourself, uh, you have to analyze yourself and your um, surrounding um, e-commerces, like for example, your competitors, the market, um, the law, something like that as well. So you have to list out strength, weakness, opportunities and threats or the SWOT, uh, of your e-commerce uh, that you plan to have or you are having right now. Uh, after you just like um, decide what are strength, weaknesses, opportunity, and threats, uh, don't forget that strengths uh, and um, um, weaknesses, uh, they are internal. Uh, you analyze yourself and if it is not good, uh, sorry, if it's good, that means it's your strength. Uh, that's good, you have to keep it. Uh, while um, if it has a weakness, uh, weakness means the internal weakness that you can change it. Uh, when you realize that it is a weakness, then you change it. 
ว่า the opportunity and threats นะครับ that are external factors นะครับ when you know that um, they are um, opportunities นะครับ that is good but sometimes if the opportunities that you have got turns to be the threats you cannot do anything because it's out of your control it's the external factor นะครับ so um, in this case you may have to find plan B plan C for your business as well for the threats นะครับ most of the time the threats are from just like external factors that you cannot control for example if um, the government just um, enact some laws you cannot avoid it นะครับ or if you say that okay currently selling or um, I mean selling the products นะครับ to other countries currently if they say that okay the um, the government doesn't collect the tax from you but it doesn't guarantee that in the future they will not collect this tax if they just like collect the tax from you นะครับ in the future how can you do that that means your cost will be increasing นะครับ can um, will you allow the um, customer to just like accept that cost นะครับ or you pay for them something like that you have to think is the threats after we finish talking about the SWOT analysis already นะครับ the next thing นะครับ or the last thing that I mentioned on the last class was about the e-commerce presence map นะครับ the e-commerce presence map นะครับ are the map that you have or are the diagrams that you have to think that okay What are the kind or what are the type of presence that you plan to have on website, on email, on social media or offline media? นะครับ And then you have to identify that for these type of presence, what platform are you going to use? นะครับ And when you decide for the platform to use already, นะครับ You have to think about the activities as well. What are activities, นะครับ On um that you are going to have on those platform? When you have the ideas about this already, นะครับ The next thing that we have to know more, นะครับ apart from the um, presence e-commerce presence map already, นะครับ the next thing that you have to know is that okay, the most important, นะครับ management challenge, นะครับ goes to the systematic approach that you have to think, because whenever you have to think, นะครับ or when you have to develop the systematic approach. นะครับ for your online presence นะครับ on your e-commerce presence already นะครับ you have to develop clear understanding of business objective what are they how do you gonna have it นะครับ how do you gonna write them down นะครับ because when you have to just like um do the online um or the e-commerce presence normally we just like follow our e-commerce presence according to the business objective that we have got And then you have to know how to choose the right technology to achieve those objectives. นะครับ Sometimes, นะครับ um, some businesses they say that okay, I stick with my um with the sorry with the smartphone, นะครับ only. But you can see that right now there are some more opportunities. We have like some devices that are IOTs, some devices that are wearable, นะครับ like gadgets like um. Apple Watch, something like that. You may be able to just like join those kind of technology to be used with your e-commerce as well. For example, if you say that you would like to develop an e-commerce in order to let the customers to have um, the um, online ordering of their products when they are just like going around, for example, um, if you say that, okay. For your customers, if you say that you would like to develop the vending machine. System, นะครับ let's say, and you say that okay, if your customers, นะครับ who are sport guys, they um what to say, they normally when they run um in the park, let's say, they don't bring the catch. The things that they bring is just their um let's say um smart watch like Apple Watch, and also just the car key, just that. So you can see that in here, if you just set up the vending machine, นะครับ at um Around each corner of the park, you can see that in this one, you can just like let them use their um, Apple Watch to pay the money, นะครับ when they would like to buy the stuff, นะครับ the the drinks, นะครับ on the uh, vending machine. Or sometimes we say that okay, we want to have um, our, our platform in order to let our customer to have the online ordering of their groceries product at Um, 
BTS or the Sky Train, let's say, at the morning time before they go to work, they may they may just like order at the station first, and after that they just like pay the money. At that time, <clears throat> you can see that when the people just carry their backpack, um, then they may use like that smartwatch to help. In order to just like review the orders or the smartphone up to you, you have to design like that. And um, during the, um, I mean, when they come back, they can just like um, get their stuff on the ground floor of the train station, something like that. Apart from that one, we may say that, okay, um, if we are just like running the transportation um, system, we say that, okay, instead of just like letting the customer to use their smartphone or to use their um, the physical card to tap on and off um, of the gate you can just like use the smartphone um sorry the smartwatch like apple watch to tap in order to deduct the money or you say that okay you are developing the system for let's say um, what to say um, the expressway or the tollway instead of having the um, the what to say the card and then just like um, deduct the money from the card you may just like use smartwatch or smartphone in order to have like the rf um, for like paying the money instead something like that then you have to think then um, these are like the thing that you have to think that what are the right technology that can just like accomplish those objectives you might say that the objective is that you try to facilitate your customers in order to pay easily so that they can just like buy whatever they want in a quicker time. Uh, for example, suppose we are talking about like, let's say if you're talking about the e-tailers like um, Lazada or Shopee, uh, the way that they do in order to let the customer to pay easily is that you can link your credit cards with, the, uh, with your account. So that means when you really have to pay have you don't need to enter any information more. You can just choose that, okay, pay by credit card. And it can just, it just asks for the confirmation that is that this um, card number, and then you can click confirm. Uh, compare with another e-business. Uh, if they sell the product to the customer and every time when the customer has to pay the money, they have to enter all the card information. Apart from that, they also have the OTP. Uh, in order to, uh, I mean, apart from card number, they have to just use the OTP for the payment. Even though when you buy something from that website, it might cost you, let's say 20, 30 bucks, but you have to just like um, wait for OTP and then response. And sometimes um, some of the website needs you, needs you to just like enter the card number as well every time that you purchase. For me, myself, I think it is like quite um, inconvenient because sometimes I'm sitting in one room and my wallet is on another room. I cannot remember my um, credit card number. So I think that I, I, I better be able to save the um, credit card information in that um, e-commerce platform so that I can use it straight away. Uh, for OTP, uh, I don't have any problem. But if they ask me to enter the card every time, it wastes my time to do that. Uh, so in this one, you have to think if the company uh, um, allows the customer in order to just like pay quickly, uh, safely as well, they may be able to buy the product from you easier uh, and quicker. Especially sometimes if um, purchasing of the product in that case, it might be just like some time of, um, it might be the auction, something like that. If let's say in order to start um, bidding, you have to enter a lot of information every time. I'm sure that none, um, not many people will be interested in that um, auction platform. But if you can just like prepare everything in your account first, and when the customer would like to start their auction, they can just click start and they can just like um, start bidding by entering the amount of money that would be better for them. And sometimes you have to know that some of the e-commerce 
they force the customer นะครับ that if the customer would like to buy from us you need to have um, Facebook account first because the confirmation will be done um, through the messenger something like that some of the customer may not um, like it because I mean like it's possible that somebody doesn't have Facebook account and if they want to buy from you นะครับ to buy the products or services from you you force them to have Facebook account that is not okay for them So this one you have to know that what is the right technology for your e-commerce? What is the right technology for your customer as well? Okay. The next one, I have the next one. We talk about pieces of the site building puzzle. There are main areas where you will need to make decisions. The first one, I have human resources and organizational capabilities. I have. You have to create a team with the skill set needed to build and manage a successful site. Uh, if everyone is brand new, นะครับ it is it is not okay. If you remember from the um, interaction design or um, system analysis and design courses that you took before with me, นะครับ you can see that um, the team นะครับ has need to have like many roles inside. You have the project manager. You have the developer of the team. นะครับ Okay, in this case, you can see that for anyone who need to be the project manager, นะครับ normally they are not the one who is just like um, newly grad. At least you need to have some experiences from other project before. These one, นะครับ these ones are like the way that you have to just like think about the human resource and um, the organizational capabilities. นะครับ you can start from small first. นะครับ and then when everyone gain like experience you can just like increase the size of your companies นะครับ okay and then the next thing is about hardware and software นะครับ for hardware and software these are important too นะครับ um what kind of hardware and software do you need to have or do you need to use for this um e-commerce platform that you are going to have นะครับ um for example if you say that okay for hardware and software Um, you you don't need to set up your own servers. Can you have? Can you use the cloud base instead? Or as well for the software, นะครับ Shall we use the um the cloud technology instead of setting up our own servers, นะครับ And for the um user side, นะครับ Which platform, นะครับ Or which hardware and software would you like your customers to use, นะครับ Computer. นะครับ tablet smartphone smartwatch นะครับ or what นะครับ okay somebody just like use something like IoT something like that for example they may have like some fridge นะครับ for example LG or Samsung they have the refrigerator that can order the stuff นะครับ but apart from that one you have to think about the security the payments นะครับ in specific countries as well นะครับ telecommunications นะครับ what kind of telecommunications would you like to use นะครับ not on both um, not on your side only but also your customer side too whether you would like to use the 5G's whether you would like to use the um, the LAN or um, broadband นะครับ depends site design how do you gonna design it do you have the um, team who designed the the site นะครับ you have to plan it ahead before you start doing it นะครับ these are main areas that you need to make decisions นะครับ after that when you know just like um these kind of um pieces of puzzles already you try to just like connect them together in order to do that นะครับ we have to use the knowledge that we learn from um the interaction design course นะครับ that is SDLC นะครับ system development life cycle นะครับ that you have to use in this one It's a methodology to understand um, business objective of a system and design a, an appropriate solution. I have um, in this one, as we learn already, we have five major steps that you have to think about: system analysis and planning, system design, system development or building the system, system testing, and lastly, it's the system implementation and post implementation tasks. For the post implementation, that is maintenance step. Okay, in this one. So, 
when you have to just like apply the SDLC with the website, right? or your on your e-commerce platform, right? it goes to this one. Um, these are like five steps that we do. And finally, right? from implementation, right? we can just like go back to the first phase. Once again, if you need to have like the next version, or if you want to have the further development, and keep on maintaining your system. Okay, for the best practices that you have to keep in mind. The first one, your e-commerce website or e-commerce platform must be continuous availability, 99% plus. So that means try not to have the downtime. If you know that sometimes you need to have the system maintenance, Okay. It might have some downtime. So how can you avoid this? For example, you may say that, okay, you have two servers. Okay. One is a production server. Okay. The other one is a spare one. Wow, you know that, okay, you need to have the, um, let's say you have to run the report or what, doing whatever thing for, for the um, production server. Then you have to switch to let the um, customers to use the spare one. And then you can run um, the, um, the maintenance step of the primary server. And after that, you switch back. So that means you can guarantee that it's 100% um, or 99% plus downtime for your, uh, sorry, 99% plus um, the um, serving time uh, um, of your um, e-commerce platform. And also, the next one, you have to design for scalability as well. If it's more popular, for example, if you say that, firstly, you allow 10 users plus uh, to um, use your system uh, without any problem. But if it is more than that, uh, it may cause like the system to be slowed down or freezing. Then you have to think that, okay, in the future, if you have to, if you have to just like um, scale up your system, have, you need to have a room for scaling up. And also, if you say that, okay, firstly, you plan the users to be able to use for up to 100,000 users. But if, let's say, approximately, you know that your users are around like 50,000 and not more than that, because it's not worth enough, something like that, um, how are you going to scale down our system size? Have, the next one is built-in management for end-to-end -end delivery. Uh -huh. um, in this case, it means that how can you just like um, take a look and control your system uh -huh, for, um, for your customers and for your company in order to serve um, the customer uh -huh, um, directly. For example, you may have to set up the back-end uh -huh, or you may have to set up the back office so that if the customer orders something and they make a phone call, for example, they say that they haven't received your um, products. They order from, for a week already and the product delivery, normally you guarantee them to deliver within two days, let's say. When they call you, you must have the system in order to manage the delivery of the service to the customer straight away. Don't be like when they call you, you say that, okay, I'll call you back. Uh -huh. because you don't know where to find the problems. Uh -huh. That is not okay. You have to just like find out that, okay, um, how do you gonna have the system like the back end or uh, the back office to help um, giving the answers for yourself and also for the customer as well. The next one, plan for growth. This one is also help for um, supporting the design for scalability. Design pages for high speed performance. In this one is important. Sometimes you know that the problem is because of a lot of graphics. Uh -huh. So, um, and it makes like customers complain. Then you may say that, okay, you have two choices to the customers. Um, for example, the first one, you just like um, go to, for example, and have if users use their smartphone to just like see um, or just like use your e-commerce, you may say that, okay, instead of, of having the desktop version, you may say that, okay, you have just like the smartphone version of the page. So that it just cut off like unimportant graphics so that um, they can just like 
save the time for um, um, accessing your e-commerce. Uh -huh. Apart from that one, uh -huh. um, if you say that, okay, you provide the contents, uh -huh, the digital content like the streaming video online, you can see that most of the um, video streaming services, they allow the users to adjust the resolution uh -huh, of the video quality as well. Uh -huh. Otherwise, if you say that you always provide with the 4K while the users uh -huh, have the problem with that, the first one, internet speed. Second one, the, their um, screen uh -huh, or their TVs do not support 4K. Uh -huh. So you don't need to have 4K. Uh, then the customer should be able to just like adjust the resolution to be the lower one. For example, the full HD should be enough, something like that. Or you may say that, okay, you also provide the high quality uh, of, the, um, of the streaming. For example, you also have 8K as well. But for 8K, that is for premium subscription, something like that. So that means if the customers who do not pay for the premium subscription, they don't see the 8K anyway. Even though it is the option, somebody may say that, okay, I will show that we have 8K, but it is pale in gray, so that the customer will be curious that how can I just like watch 8K, and when they ask you, you tell them that, okay, um, once they click, they see like the subscription screen, something like that, somebody think like that. But somebody say that, okay, if the customers do not subscribe, they don't see a button called 8K straight away. They see just full HD, um, and just like um, HD and um, 4K at most, something like that. Okay, without um, annoying uh, um, the customer, so it depends on you. Uh, and the last one, understand and optimize workload on system. Uh, you have to see that, okay, sometimes you may say that, okay, you have the front end server, uh, you have database server, you have back end server, how do you gonna optimize the workload of these kind of systems? Uh -huh, because sometimes when you purchase the servers uh -huh, or the cloud service for these kind of um, components equally, when you really have to just like use them uh -huh, in practice, some of the server might have to work more. For example, you may say that, okay, the um, database server works uh -huh, the heaviest one. So in that one, you may just like have to prepare the server, uh -huh, database server that, that fits your task. Uh, that has like more capability than front end and back end that you have got something like that. Wow, some of um, the e-commerce websites say that, okay, my front end just like show graphics uh, heavily. So in that one, the front end might have to work a lot and it, um, um, it waits for the query from the users a lot as well. So in that one, you have to just like prepare your um, server, uh, the front end server in order to support this kind of task heavier than just like other servers that you have got. So you have, you need to understand the workload on the system as well. Uh, okay. And apart from that one, sometimes if you use a cloud service and if it is the cloud service, uh, that the owner of the, the, that cloud service is in overseas, you have to be careful about the time, uh, the peak time of that um, the cloud service as well, that may cause your e-commerce website to be slowed down. Uh -huh. So you may have to discuss with those company first, uh -huh. or sometimes some companies say that, okay, they may use like the cloud, um, the cloud service uh -huh, from um, two different countries. Uh -huh. One might be just like the country that is nearby or is in the same country as your website located. Um, while the other one uh, is like the country, the, the um, cloud service that is provided by the provider in um, um, another country that is far from you so that the time zone is different. So um, the task uh, or the workload will be switched over the time, uh, depends on the time zone. Uh, for example, um, for me, I may say that, okay, the server that will be used uh, during our daytime I can use the um, server in the States because right now in Thailand, uh, it's 12 o'clock, let's say, but in the States, it's midnight. So not many people use it. Uh, um, but I mean, like during the daytime, uh, uh, I mean, during the nighttime in Thailand, um, we say that, okay, um, we may have to use the servers uh, where the servers or where the countries, where that server is located uh, is 
in the nighttime already. So um, not many people use that service much, something like that. Uh, so this one, we have to think about this one. After that, uh, for the um, phase, that is system analysis and planning, we have to think of business objective. Uh, list of capabilities you want your e-commerce to have to have. Next, apart from business objective, you have to list I have the system functionality. You have to list out the system functionalities. List of information system capabilities needed to achieve business objective. I have what capabilities in term of your information system I have need to have in order to support the business objective that you set up. Next one. You have, you need to set up the information requirements. What information do you want? Information elements that system must produce in order to achieve business objectives. I have, these are three major things I have in this phase for system analysis and planning that you need to have. I have in this, sorry, in the table, um, in this table, it shows um, three components or three aspects that I mentioned in the previous slide. I have, okay. Um, for in this um for this one I have for this table, this table I have is for a typical e-commerce site. I have, for example, I have if you say that okay your business objective is to display goods, I have, then the system functionality that you have to provide I have is digital catalog so that it can display good right, and the information requirements I have. To display a digital catalog, you need to have dynamic text and graphics catalog. In terms of um, content, we say that our business objective is to provide product information. Then in the information system, it needs to show the product database. You need to have product database. And information requirement for that product database, we need to have product description, stocking numbers, and inventory level. I have um, for personalizing or customizing product. I have we say that our e-commerce need to be able to personalize or customize the product according to our need of our customer. I have so in order to do that, our system must have the customer on-site tracking, or you may need to have AI in order to analyze the um, behavior of our. Customer. And the information that we have, I have, the site will log every customer visit, data mining capability to identify common customer paths and appropriate responses. Or you may just like say that, okay, information requirement means that in this case, you use a deep learning in order to just like analyze the pattern have, of the customer and guess what they want. Um, if we have the business business objective that is to engage customers in conversation, then the functionality of the system should have to provide the on-site block. While the information requirement, we have software with blocking and community response functionality. If our business objective say that we need to have um, to execute a transaction, then system should have shopping cart and payment system. And the information requirement, we need to have secure credit card uh, clearing, multiple payment options. Uh, if we say that we want our e-commerce to accumulate customer information, then we must have customer database with name, address, phone, email for all customers, and online customer registration. Uh, if our business said that we um, the objective is to provide after sale customer support, then we our system should have the sales database in that. And in the sales database, we need to have customer ID, product date, payment, shipment date. Uh, if we say that our objective, the uh, business objective, need to have coordinate marketing and advertising, then our system should have ad server, email server, email campaign manager, and ad banner manager. And in those functionality that have in the system, 
we need to have site behavior log of prospects and customer link to email and banner ad campaign. In terms of understanding marketing effectiveness, we should have site tracking and reporting system. And in those site tracking and reporting system, we should have number of unique visitors, pages visited, product purchase, and identified by marketing campaign. And lastly, if you say that, okay, your business objective is to provide production and suppliers link, the functionality of the system should have inventory management system. And in the inventory management system, we should provide product and inventory levels, supplier ID, and contact. Order quantity, data by product. These are the things that we need to have in order to support the inventory management system. Uh, so these are three different levels. The first one on the left hand side column is the objective in terms of business. You can see that it avoids to have like the technical term. While system functionality, it's more technical term uh, than the business objective ones. And um, information requirements is the detail for that functionality for the information that we need to have, we need to provide for that system functionality. After that, uh, we talk about the um, system design. After we have the system analysis, we go to system design. In terms of system design, you also have to think about hardware and software platform. So we come up with the system design specification. For the system design spec, you have to think of the main component of a system and the relationship to one another. We just describe all of them. Uh, and in terms of um, system design, we have two different components. One is logical design. The other one is physical design. If you remember, logical design uh, is just the data flow diagrams telling uh, that, okay, what are the processes? What are data flow? What are um, data store? Uh, um, what are entity or source and sync uh, of those, of those um, design those information system and database uh, at most. While the physical design is more detailed than that, it goes down into the technical levels. You have to specify actual physical software components and models that you have to use uh, and models that you have to implement. In this one, you can see that, okay, we talk about um, the logical design for a simple website. Uh, You can see that we have a um, website customer. I have okay. website customer. Customer will send the HTTP request. I have we verify login. I have and then um, when we verify, we get the data or information from customer database. I have to accept or to reject that visitor. I have and then we display catalog pages. I have we retrieve the data from the data, catalog database. I have. And after that, if the customer decide to purchase your product from what we display, you can just like update the information into the order database. And also we update the purchasing in our customer database as well to just like store the history, to update the catalog. And after that, you fulfill the order by shipping the products. And the order ship confirm that will be sent to the customer so that they acknowledge that you um, ship the products to them already. This is the um, simple data flow diagrams. Have, um, this one describes the flow of information requests and response for a simple website. Have, but when we turn it to be the physical design, it looks like this. Have, it's just like a bit more details technically. For example, from customer, they may use cable uh, or DSL or T1 in order to communicate uh, through the internet. And for the internet to our website, uh, we connect to T1 very sound line uh, at 1.54 megabit per second. Or if you have the least line, um, what is the speed that you rent? Uh, and on your side, you have HP or Dell quad core web servers and five tera of storage. Uh, and we say that, okay, we have, um, what kind of servers do we have? We use Oracle database. 
We use IBM Web Sphere and e-commerce suite. We have ad server, online catalog server, mail server, and shopping cart. So <clears throat> these are just like the physical design of your um, information system for what kind of like um, hardware, in terms of hardware, software that we use. After that, when we decide or when we just like prepare the logical um, design and physical design for our information system or our website already or, or our e-commerce platform already. The next thing that we have to do is that you have to make a decision whether you use in-house or whether you use the outsourcing. So outsourcing means that you hire somebody else to do it. So sometimes when you have to make a decision whether you would like to use the in-house or outsourcing, have built your own or outsourcing, you have to think that, okay, whether you have the team to develop or not, okay? So if you have, have your team to develop, have, um, the team that used to develop the uh, websites have, or e-commerce platform, have, um, we require the team with diverse skill set, choice of software tools, both risk and possible benefit. You can see that in this one, if you want to design the e-commerce platform, it is a bit complicated than designing the information system that we study from the interaction design subject. The reason is because when you have to use or when you have to design your website or e-commerce platform, it deals with like lots of people, especially for your customer. If you design it and it's just like very difficult to use, or the website is not attractive, your customer may just like switch to your competitor instead. So you have to think about this as well. And I have some of the team has to recruit the web designer so that it um, help the designing to be just like attract your customer in there. So um, for the host, whether you would like to have the host on or outsourcing, for hosting, uh, hosting company responsible for ensuring site is accessible 24 seven for monthly fee, or you have co-location that you purchase or lease web server, uh, and then you just like um, store that server on that uh, Windows place uh, or Windows um, server center, uh, but you can just, just like control over that operation. Uh, so this one, it helps for the companies who do not have just like the IT center of their own. If you have to put the server or the web server in your, in your company, while you don't have anyone who look after it, you just like leave it as one computer. It might be possible that if it is the blackout on that day, your host or your website is down immediately. And as I told you, the best practice is that you need to have 99% plus for uptime. So be careful about this. I suggest you that, okay, if you don't have like the facilities in your company, you may just use the co-location or you may use a cloud service instead. Or if you don't want to control, um, by yourself, you may just that like use some web hosting as well. Right. Um, the next one that I just want to talk. Um, this is just an example only. This is curly hair and appliant appliant nest. I'll talk about it later on. Okay. The next step, the next step is to do the testing implementation and maintenance. This is the next step. After we develop already, we need to do the testing. For the testing, there are like um, three major testing that we need to have. Unit testing, system testing, and acceptance testing. What are they? Unit testing is each program or each unit or each module inside your um, system is tested. If it is the website, it might be one page. What that you do, um, the unit testing, you test just one page. While the system testing, 
means that if you integrate all of them together, for example, um, from the catalog browsing and then ordering and then payments, you just like um, do the testing for the whole loop, whether it's correct or not, whether the um, products that customer order just like calculate the correct um, amount of money, um, prepare the, um, what to say, the payment for the customer correctly or not, also deducts the inventory amount correctly or not, prepare the billing documents correctly or not, prepare the delivery document correctly or not. Now, these are system testing. Now, come to the last kind of testing that is acceptance testing. And in the last um, subject that we studied, now, that was interaction design, now, I call it as UAT or user's acceptance test. Um, acceptance testing here normally, we use um, the users now, or customers or the representatives of or delegates of the customer to do acceptance testing now, to check whether they are satisfied with the system or not. Now, will they accept this one or not? You can see that for the example, like um, some e-commerce website, for example, um, if we are talking um, about Amazon or eBay or um, um, what to say, Lazada, the end users or end customer don't do the acceptance testing. They have um, the delegates or the um, group of people okay? that might be just like the um, outsourcing people okay? or it might be like the group of um, system designer okay? to test on this system, whether they accept or not whether every step uh, from um, browsing the catalog until payments, uh, until the product just like delivered and show the status in the system, is it okay for them or not? So that they can accept this one. Uh, after we have the testing, the next step is to implement uh, and maintenance. Uh, for implement and maintenance in here, we say that, okay, maintenance is ongoing. You never stop maintaining the system. Uh -huh. Once the system is, has been using, there might be some problems happen for sure. Then we need to do the maintenance all the time. Uh -huh. And for maintenance costs, uh -huh, it's similar to development costs as well, because you need to have people uh -huh, who look after the system. And if the um, system has a problem, you still need the developer in order to fix that problem as well. So that's why the maintenance cost is similar to development cost. This is um, the cost that you always have it. And then you always have to do the benchmarking of the system all the time. Uh -huh. Benchmarking here in terms of technical, uh -huh. you see that, okay, um, on the first day uh -huh, that you start this system, uh -huh, is it slow, how slow it is or how fast it is? Is it um, as we expect or not? And when you run the system for a while, you still have to do the benchmarking as well, whether the system is okay or not. Perhaps is it slow down or is it still like um, the same speed as we just like start from the beginning to the end? Perhaps, okay. After we just like finish the uh, maintenance step already, the next thing that you have to know is that, okay, when you have simple, versus multi-tiered website architecture. What do we have to know or what do we have to do? For the system architecture I have in here, this is the arrangement of software, hardware and task in the information system needed to achieve a specific functionality. Basic thing, if we don't have any, um, any kind of the complexity much, we might use like the two tier instead to have the web server and database server, that is enough. Uh, but if you say that, okay, your system is complicated, uh, two tier is not enough, you may need to have multi-tier, like for example, three tier or four tier of the servers. So we have um, multi-tier, for example, we may have web application servers uh, as a um, main server that con uh, contact with the customer. And the other side, the other tier, we have back end. We have legacy databases that when the customer order or browse the information, they may just like have to get the data from the legacy databases as well. Let me give you an example of the easy multi-tier 
um, architecture นะครับ let's think about the um, what to say um, i banking ครับ this is multi tier because firstly it has the web app นะครับ web app server inside นะครับ they have the back end they also have the legacy database that is mainframe computer so that means if you want to withdraw the money นะครับ in here you cannot go directly to their mainframe computer all of the information will be processed between back end and mainframe computer first and when you would like to uh, withdraw the money or let's say transfer the money you go to its back end server um, from your um, from the customer go to web app web app contact with the back end and um, the back end will automatically just like if they have the data from the mainframe computer they can just like reply to the web app for the transferring of the money straight away so that means if we say that okay um, around uh, midnight let's say 11 p.m or midnight the web app will be closed นะครับ the connection so that means when you just like um sorry um when you just like contact the web app it say that okay right now it's um down for maintenance นะครับ and you can just like transfer the money in the next one hour or two hour let's say for the one that i use i use scb นะครับ the things that happen is that um between um 11 pm to midnight they will just like um, stop นะครับ the transaction like um, real time transferring of the money I can just like post my um, money transfer but they say that okay if I transfer between 11 p.m. to 1 a.m. it just like go to the next working days instead because I cannot really transfer the money I have to wait until the connection is back นะครับ so this is multi tier um, architecture that some services or some e-commerce need to use this นะครับ apart from that one นะครับ let's see for the two tier you can see that for users request นะครับ through apps or through uh, websites นะครับ we'll go through web server first and the web server go to just like get the data and update data from and to database server นะครับ this is the basic two tier architecture wow the multi tier they have like the layers of the web servers multi-tier layer like e-commerce server app server database server ad server and mail server while the back end layer in here you have another series of servers who just like um, get the data from middle tier update for other purposes for example um, they have corporate applications and finance production Manage, uh, ma material requirement planning or MRP, enterprise system and HR system. So that means if the customer would like to purchase the products from us, have at most, it's just like between web server layer and middle tier layer only. Have, but when you just like conduct the um, purchasing have, with this multi -tier, uh, uh, middle tier layer already, those data will be uh, will go to update in those corporate applications. Uh -huh. For example, the back end we may use SAP uh -huh, as a back end. So that means customer do not buy or say I'm sorry, customer do not buy anything directly from SAP server, but we need to have a website uh -huh, in order to just like access the data uh -huh, for as the e-commerce server only. It's not related directly to SAP server, something like that. This is an example of the multi-tier e-commerce architecture. If you just like say that you just like run a large scale business, most of those business must have the backend layers in order to just like process the performance of the company, financial um, information and also accounting information they are all in the back end layer here uh, but for a small business uh, okay let me go back to this one a bit the things that we do is that we have just web server and database server only 
when you would like to um, see the business performance, I have to check the stock. You have the computer inside, and then you just contact. Um, you just connect to database server and process. You may download it and use Excel, or you may use like um, the um, Oracle นะครับ desktop, or you may just like use Access นะครับ to just like process this. You don't have a um, special server like we have got. And I have for the large business like the backend server like this. Okay, All right. Okay, so for the web server software, and I have in that layer, we may use Apache or we may use Microsoft IIS. I have in order to just like manage the web service. I have actually we have like some other tools. I have nowadays as well. Apart from that one, in term of managing the website, I have. We use the site management tools, uh, like um, for the basic tool that include in all the web servers to verify that the page, uh, the link are valid or not, uh, and also identify the orphan file so that you can manage the orphan file to have the link properly. Or um, in some system, we may use the third party software. Uh, for the advanced management, like monitor the customer purchasing, uh, um, track the marketing campaign effectiveness, something like that. Uh, we may have like some dashboard, uh, like Google Analytics platform, in order for advanced management of just like the traffic of the customer, something like that. Uh, and for the next one, uh, dynamic page generation tools, uh, like. Um, we may have like the dynamic page generation uh, to have like the content stored in database and fetch when we need. Uh, the common tools are like CGIS, PJSP, uh, and advantages. Uh, this one, when we have dynamic page generation tools, it can enable uses of content management system or CMS straight away. Uh, after that, when we talk about the uh, web server software already, the next one we talk about is the application server. Uh, for the app server uh, or web app server, it provides specific business functionality required for a website. Uh, then you have to develop the app server by yourself. Uh, or you may just like have some, some um, software uh, that you can use um, in order to just like um, use as a web server uh, directly for the type of middleware that we may use uh, to connect the traditional corporate systems to customers. Uh, this one is legacy system. For example, if we say that, okay, in the past, we sold the products uh, in the um, convenience store. But right now, we also would like to let the customers to order the product uh, that we have in the convenience store online. For example, you can see that right now, 7-Eleven in Thailand, they use this, this um, kind of thing. Uh, um, when you go to 7-Eleven, you can buy um, any products in that branch. Uh, if you just like go to 7-Eleven apps, uh, you can just like click to choose that branch and then you can see their products as well with the stock that they have got. Uh, so that means the application, uh, the 7-Eleven application connects <clears throat> to that traditional 7-Eleven corporate uh, system. So that, okay, you can order those kind of products online. And then um, once you click to deliver, uh, they can just like um, see the order uh, um, in that branch. And then they just like let someone, uh, let their staff to set up that um, order for delivery, uh, they fulfill the order for you. Uh, for single function applications, they are being replaced by integrated software tools that combine all functionality needed for e-commerce site. Uh, apart from just like seeing the um, product um, inventory, when you just like use the application of 7-Eleven, you can order, you can pay, you can just like let someone to order by specifying the time. But for the um, legacy systems, if you go to 7-Eleven, you cannot say that, okay, I order this, 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 and this, I'll pay, uh, and, and can you have someone to deliver it to my house? 
um, you cannot do like that in the legacy system. นะครับ Then that means you have to use this kind of the uh, middleware in order to just like um, order it online and let someone to deliver the goods for you. And then um, the inventory นะครับ level will be updated นะครับ When you just for example, if you say that okay in the stock they have five bottles of um, unsweetened milk, let's say you want to order three. Then you order it online free. That means the stock will be cut to be two left in their stock because for um, normally they have five. You order three, then they have two in, in stock. So that's why if you order any goods in 7-Eleven through its application, um, the staff has to set up, has to set up or has to fulfill your order um, immediately. Otherwise, let's say, They count the stock of milk from the refrigerator that they have, right? And that means in the stock, in I mean in the refrigerator, they have five bottles of milk. If the staff, or delivery person, does not set up your order, and there is another customer purchase those five bottles of milk immediately, so that means the 7-Eleven run out of the stock. Immediately to fill up for you. You order three, but there's none left. So in this one, if you run your own e-commerce, you have to be careful because right now you say that okay, the online customer and the physical customer in the branch, they see the same stock. So in this case, the way to solve the problem is that you have to just like let the delivery person to set up your order. Um, um, as soon as they can. For example, every 15 minutes, something like that. If they are in the branch, they have to set up the order for you. But for some e-commerce, they separate the stock for, um, I mean, physical store and the um, e-commerce store separately. Customer might not see the stock. The stock, I mean, customer in the physical store might not see the stock. The things that they see is just like example of the stock that you show it on the shelf, but you still have in the warehouse anyway, something like that. So in this one, you have to know how to just like control the stock properly. After that, apart from the application servers, we need to have um, e-commerce merchant server software. For the e-commerce merchant server software, some of um, the company, some of e-commerce company develop their own merchant server software, but some of the company may purchase the merchant server software to be integrated with their um, web. So for the merchant server software, it provides basic functionality for sale. So the first one, the merchant software must provide catalog, the online catalog. So it just like lists all the products available on the website and customizable. So in this one, if you just like have this online um, catalog, you update um, all of your products on um, database only, and then the online catalog will display it. And then um, sometimes some of the products have the date and time to show. For example, if you say that, okay, you start showing the product on um, 19th of October, and then we sell this product for three days only. So that means after the 21st of October, they will hide this product from the catalog, something like that. These are like the functionality of online catalog that should be able to uh, manage your products uh, in the catalog online. The next one, shopping cart. The shopping cart functions uh, are the functions that allow you, um, your customer uh, to choose the products that they want, specify the quantity, review all of the products and the quantity that they order with like some special requests. They can edit selections. They can make purchase. Including if we have just like some um, special promotion code, you can just like also be able to enter the code and the code will be checked against the database 
this is the um, functionality of the shopping cart uh -huh, that has to provide to the customer. And the next one is credit card processing. Apart from credit card, uh -huh, other channels of payment, including bank transfer, uh -huh, I mean, internet banking, including some other options, for example, some of the e-commerce website may want to let allow, um, sorry, may allow the customer to pay through the um, digital currency. Uh -huh. For example, you can buy by um, using Bitcoin, something like that. You need to have the processor for Bitcoin uh -huh, and um, cryptocurrency as well. So the credit card processing and the, um, the payment processing typically works in conjunction with the shopping cart. So the amount of money uh -huh, that customer has to pay for example, if you say that you want to buy three bottles of milk, two bars of chocolate, um, let's say Kit Kat, um, the shopping cart will just find the um, summary. For example, you get discount from the special promotion 10%. So if the original cost is 200 baht, uh -huh, it's deducted by 10%, uh -huh, that is 20 baht, then you have to pay 180 baht. So the credit card processing will just like inform you that you have to pay 180 baht. In what payment channel would you like to pay? Uh -huh. And also, some of the um some of the system they allow the customer to have just like pay and as the installment as well so it's in the credit card processing here uh -huh. because you have some campaign link with the credit card uh -huh. then the customer can just like um
Any ideas? No. No? Okay. Jira, you have? Have you? Okay, the same question. Why would a mobile website or app from the same version need different content or functionality? Uh, I think because like uh, in a desktop website, uh, some functionality might work well, but uh, in a mobile, like stated earlier, uh, it's not good for data entry tool, but uh, can be good for navigational tool. So maybe um, if they were to implement a mobile uh, e-commerce, they would focus more on that part. Okay. Um, just like think of an example of what the, um, what to say, if you go to the internet banking, uh -huh, by going to a website of internet banking, you can just like do everything uh -huh, as the bank allows you to do. But when you just like have a look on its um, mobile apps, they just like um, simplify those function. Some functions are not available, for example, um, as I told you earlier, I use um, SCB Internet Banking. If I just want to, let's say, um, see the, what to say? I want to see the, the um, statements of my credit cards that I used on the last month. I can just like um, see it on my mobile, sorry, I can see it on the website on my PC. I can download it or print it out as a PDF form. Wow, on the um, internet banking on mobile, like on the website or on the application on the mobile version, I cannot see the um, statement. I see just the total amount of money that I have to pay. But I cannot see that, okay, on what day, how much did I use? Okay, I bought um, um, what product from what merchant? I couldn't see that. The reason is because sometimes you know that, okay, when people would like to just like do something like um, to see the details of the um, statement properly, they should sit on the table and then use the computer. And they say that, okay, actually for those statements, they sent you through the email already. That's why if you just like have a look on mobile phone, they don't um, open this feature for you. And also it will be difficult to just like simplify the statement information. So that's why they just like decide not show it on um, the smartphone screen. If you want to have a look, you have to go to your um, email and then download the document and have a look as a PDF file instead. Uh, okay. And the last one, in which cases would a merchant want to develop a mobile app over a mobile site? Not hard cap. I think when the merchant has uh, is running low on budget or wants to expand their market in the mobile platform, I think. Um, which one is more expensive between between mobile app? Oh, and mobile, mobile app and mobile website. Okay, I read that wrong. Mobile. Which one is more expensive? I think mobile app is more mobile app is more expensive than mobile website. So yeah. when the developer wants to, you know, like Shopee, they put the mobile app before they have a Shopee website thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So they want they want the customer to access the, the app and they, they want the customer to access the app easy, easily, more easily than when they access the website. So mm -hmm. They want to provide more comfort to the customer, I think. I think um, another word that might be better than comfort is convenience, right? True. Mm, right. So this, this, are, this is the reason why um, some of the company decide to start with the mobile app first because they want everyone to have the mobile phone or smartphone um, to use this kind of e-commerce. All right. For example, you can see that if you used to buy the product from Lazada or Shopee, I'm sure that 90, 90 95% of the people use the mobile apps rather than the website of um, 
um, Lazada or Shopee. For anyone who use mobile website of Lazada or Shopee, they may have something or they may, they may, they may need something that they couldn't find from the mobile applications. That I mean, like it's like, <clears throat> for example, some of the users have the problem because when they just like install the mobile application, it just like has the error all the time. So that means when they would like to buy something or check their order, they may have to go to the website instead. Now, otherwise, I'm sure that most of the people will use will use the uh, mobile app instead. Uh, okay. 